You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There is a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for the week of January 5th, 2024. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we just don't feel like taking down the Christmas lights just yet. Thank you very much. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Blue Gal. Happy New Year, Drift Glass. Happy New Year, baby. And you did a beautiful job on the Christmas lights outside. So Thank leaving you. them up for the full 12 days of Christmas is a lovely thing to do. Thank you. Oh, oh. I just, I'm lazy. I don't know anything about We're 12 days We're waiting for it to warm something. up just a little bit. Yeah. And you said you might leave them out back for a while because looking do. out the kitchen window and he he bought a little tiny, it's remote. it's smaller than a credit card. Yes. Remote button it's to turn on the lights out back yeah, from the window. It, it, I put, when I redid the deck, I put some uh, solar lights out there. Just, oh, right. they, don't, they don't light up the whole place, but they lend a nice glow to it. It's just a nice kind of, ethereal romantic glow to those lights out there i might just leave them up for a while yeah they're yeah. pretty they're pretty yeah. and do you have any new year's resolutions this year drift class oh god no i don't do resolutions no oh, you don't well i i do but i can't really say them on the podcast because <laughs> they get me kicked off twitter so <laughs> let's just say i resolve to be myself this year but more so how's that i see I see. Well, I always, you know, it's it's a nice time to reset if you feel like resetting. I always stay away from the, I like to go to the swimming pool once a week, but yeah. in January, I wait until the 21st of January to go back to the pool because that first three weeks is when everyone's got their resolutions going and then they drop it and the pool <laughs> becomes less crowded and I can go back. Yeah. Human um, nature, baby. Human nature. It really is. But, um, uh, I do have a thought that I'm hoping to carry with me throughout 2024. Okay. And it comes from an old hymn. Um, and it has helped me and it helped me in December when I was sort of feeling overwhelmed by everything. Um, and the line is "O'er earth's troubled, angry sea. I see Christ walk. And just that image of walking on the waves in the storm and not being overwhelmed by it and i'm not talking about avoiding issues i'm not talking about the privilege of i'm not going to think about that today but it's the overwhelm that i want to have control over and recognize that being overwhelmed doesn't mean you're contributing um right. it's right. not required you are not required to be overwhelmed in order to uh make a difference yeah and so I will, and I've done this many times over the, you know, since 2016 or whenever, when I do feel overwhelmed, go and write postcards to voters, you know, do 10 postcards to voters. Boy, do I yeah. feel better Yeah, absolutely. when I do that. Like, okay, yeah. I've contacted 10 voters to get them out to vote to make the world a better place. So um, just not get, getting into the storm, but rising above it is my goal for 2024. Yeah, this and isn't you said a knitting, reference. but that's not. No. I already have knitting as a very established stack habit in my life. And, and just FYI, walking over the waves is not a reference to anything miraculous like no, no. On the water. It is literally quite, quite the contrary. Yeah. Yeah. It it's it's simply um keeping your and head. It's not even transcending. It's recognizing where you need your head to be. And That's it's right. not in the waves. It's above the waves so that you can see where your boat is going. That's mm -hmm. that's the analogy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Drift Glass, as, as people so often do, uh, Media Matters caught up with our podcast this week. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens sometimes. And they noticed the number of right-wingers on TV and radio who are insisting that Michelle Obama will be helicoptered in to save the Democratic ticket in 2024. Sure. Uh, number one, Michelle Obama, as she has said many times in the past four years, doesn't want to be president ever. Mm -hmm. She told Oprah she didn't want to be president ever. She said this, quote, I've never expressed any interest in politics ever. 
I mean, I agreed to support my husband. He wanted to do it and he was great at it. But at no point have I ever said, I think I want to run. Ever. Well, a couple things. First mm-hmm. of all, if you tell Oprah something, it's a blood oath. So you can never break it. <laughs> and yes, secondly, right. not, not to get all Bill Hicks on you. So so definitely she's running, right? This is so the she's not definitely running. running. Yeah, this right. is the definitely I'm not running not. dollar, marketing dollar. No, she's definitely dollar. not. No, no, and she's definitely and not. look, she's got her light mm-hmm. we carry becoming empire with journals yeah. and you know, Netflix. And I went and looked at that in preparation for this podcast. I went and looked at her books on Amazon. I ha- I don't own any of her books or her. She has a uh, becoming journal and a light we carry journal, which is guided journaling and so forth. And um, and she's a producer at Netflix. Yeah. And she and Oprah did a show, and she's done a tour which filled stadiums, you know, much more than Donald Trump. She's been able to fill stadiums because Mm -hmm. I think, and, and I'm not putting her down at all. When I say this, Mm -hmm. she is saying to an audience of women, your voice matters. Yeah. Yeah. Learn, connect to your own voice and speak your truth and, and have the comp. Here's how you have the confidence to do that. Even when you feel you don't, that is a a self-help message that many, many people have, have used to sell books over the decades Mm -hmm. and she is an inspiration to many many people to find that voice to connect with your heritage to connect with who you are whether it's racially or uh, in terms of gender or in terms of family or in terms of whatever and speak your truth and and if you don't feel you've ever been heard in your life or that you've never tapped into that terrific you have now have an opportunity to do that. And she sold a million books, billion books, whatever to get there. That has nothing to do with wanting to be president of the United States. Nope. In fact, that's a step down. <laughs> yep. Cause then Why you got to I... negotiate with Mitch McConnell and who yeah. the fuck wants to do that? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, yeah, Nobody. I'm, I'm sure when, when her husband came home from a hard day at work and said, you know, and, and had dinner with the family and didn't talk about work. Yeah. Yeah, probably but, at her insistence, and I think you know she kept him grounded because yeah. oh yeah, you know, and she and her mother-in-law. You always made jokes about that, right? Yeah, you married. Yeah, get your presidential yourself. ass in the chair. Yeah, <laughs> sit down, have dinner with your, and you know, it, it. You notice what they're doing to your husband on television. Yes, and you yeah. notice what they're doing all over Fox, and what and they're doing you to you with yeah. Moochella and yeah. oh yeah. Th- saying you're a man and photoshopping you with a penis and i mean it just goes on and on yeah why uh, why why do that why would you do that but media matters has listed people who have suggested michelle obama is either there's either one of two things either she's scheming mm-hmm. to become president of the united states right or the obama machine or the democratic machine or the media machine will manipulate her Sure. Into replacing Joe Biden on the Democratic ticket. So either she has all the agency or she has none. Right. Right. And it's Tucker Carlson, The Blaze TV's Steve Deese, National Review, Candace Owens, Benny Johnson, Rachel Campos Duffy, Ted Cruz, Greg Kelly, Roger Stone, Alex Jones, Fox News's Clay Davis. And listen to this one from Larry Kudlow, Drift Glass. So Biden's got problems with the third party. He's got problems with the second party. He may also have a problem with Michelle Obama. I'm hearing so much talk about Michelle Obama. I don't know if you all are hearing it the same way. People are saying, you know, get to the Democratic convention. Joe Biden's going to, quote, have to withdraw for health reasons. And by acclamation, they're going to bring in Michelle Obama. And the Obama machinery is already gearing up for it. I'm, just, I'm not predicting. I'm just saying I'm just hearing this from everywhere. And what I- wow. wow. It's cokey rules. It's out there. I've it heard is. everybody saying it. People are talking. People are saying it. What people? You know, people, people, the, the guy on my left side at the bar and the guy at my right side at the bar. I'm All hearing the people so much the talk about it. Everybody's yeah. talking about it. Right. The voices so in my head. So my question is, mm-hmm. why? Oh. Why Michelle Obama? Why make this a story that there has to be somebody other than Joe Biden out there as a Democratic secret weapon? And why her? Well, it's it's um, capitalizing on your investments. You know, <laughs> 
how I many thought of it that way. How many decades did the right spend turning Hillary Clinton into a monster? Five. Into an unhuman Five monster. Decades. At who who was every evil, awful thing you could possibly mm-hmm. fucking imagine mm-hmm. a person could be. Mm-hmm. And while she was Secretary of State or in the Senate, you know, 70% approval rating, boom, runs for president. Um, and what do they do? I mean, you know, Kevin McCarthy goes on television and brags about the Benghazi hearing, yeah. you know, bringing her numbers down. Well, that's and, why he wasn't elected speaker that time, you know, because he, he gave away the secret. Yeah. They Now, Imagine all of that demonizing and horrifying and secret scheming. And now you're black. Yeah. You're a black woman from Chicago. Mm. And th- I mean, she is everything they hate in a well, human being in one package. She's competent. Mm-hmm. She's yeah. uh, lovely. Well-educated. She well-educated, strong, smarter than any, any one of these fuckers. Mm-hmm. And um, powerful in her own right. Absolutely. And completely capable of taking care of herself. And they hate that. They hate that hate that so she is everything barack obama was but a lady Mm -hmm. and and it's and they invested in that they invested eight years in turning barack obama into the worst monster imaginable bill clinton was fine why can't we go back to the good old days of bill clinton being president what is up with that too i can't get over this you know bill clinton was a reasonable democrat joe biden whatever he's he's terrible but boy we need another bill clinton in the democratic party Uh, that's what we need uh, I got what? four words for you. I got four yeah. words for you, Billy. No fair remembering stuff. <laughs> it's, it, it, the, it, what boggles my mind is how simple this all really is. It's yeah. not terrible. When I hear our never Trump allies and friends tearing their hair out, trying to figure out what's going on with my party, man. What, and and why, how can they possibly believe X when they used to believe Y and Y is the opposite of X? What is it about reprogrammable meat bags don't you understand? <laughs> I mean that literally. They yeah. degauss their brain and they put new stuff in and they believe in the new stuff. It's not harder than that. And Michelle Obama is everything they hate. Everything yeah. they hate. Yeah. And, she, and like I said, everything they hate racially, gender, competence, political party, geography. She is everything they hate. So she is a big, scary red button that they can push to, to scare the shit out of their base to get from mm-hmm. the polls. You and gotta, he gets them vote. to click. It's also clicks and likes. Oh, sure. But those are the, yeah, those are the same thing. Her name gets attention. Yeah. In the Republican yeah. Party, clicks and likes and money and votes are all the same thing. Yeah. It's get, yeah. Their, get their big cow dumb eyeballs stuck on the screen, doing what they're told, voting as they're told. And Michelle Obama is one other weapon they yeah. can use to scare the crap out of the pig people and get yeah. them to the polls. And that's, you know, it's not terribly tricky to figure out. If you'd like to do something really depressing blue gal um <laughs> we did a, we did a really nice i think a really good podcast uh jesus earlier this week it yeah like, it was like day before yesterday ago. it seems like you. a month ago it does I was, well it was almost last year but Time you did a cool. really good job on that script for that show thank you thank you, you worked you. very hard on that i know yeah i had to yeah. i had to put on my hazmat suit and go wading chest deep in 2012 bullshit uh, through in case your you own archives. Yeah. I mean, that was the amazing part of it. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, you, when you go through your own archives, they sort of branch off into other things and other things and other things. And you have to, I don't know about you, but I was one of those kids that would sit on the floor with the encyclopedia all day long because mm-hmm. it would like, oh, this is cool. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is got to You got to show a little discipline when you go through your archives, got to show a little restraint and take it where you want the topic to go. And what we wanted the topic to be, if you haven't listened to it yet, was the great pundit panic of 2012 because Barack Obama was definitely going to lose. Oh my God, he's screwed. He's dying. He's never going to come back. And Mitt Romney's going to be president and it's all foreordained, et cetera, et cetera. So I went through dozens and dozens and dozens of posts that I did during the 2012 campaign season and a bunch of other resources that that those posts pointed to that were um, correct in terms of the date and time. A lot of those are gone. A lot of Mm. those videos are gone. A lot of those magazine articles are gone. They're just citations. The only place they still exist are as citations in my blog, which I'm kind of proud of. But I also read, I don't know, a couple of hundred comments from those posts. And Mm. you know what? Depressed the hell out of me is you could have written those comments today. And there would be no difference at all. Um, One of the through lines from 12 years ago, 12 years ago was... Drift glass, when the fuck is this both sides bullshit gonna stop? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with the media? Every time they, the Republicans say something like shit the bed, go crazy, these lies they tell, they lie all the time. 
They got to haul in some asshole to say, well, you know, it really is both parties. What the fuck is wrong with David Gregory? Why is David Brooks both sizing everything? What it, and believe me, I was writing about this stuff at the time, and the comments were not exactly non-reflective of my own beliefs, but it was right. fascinating to see people asking me, when are they going to stop doing this? Because this is dangerous. This is just scary, toxic, dangerous shit. 12 years later, they haven't stopped. They haven't changed. They haven't learned a goddamn thing, which is why we're in the uh, position we're in. The other stuff that was really weird were the what I call the declarative conspiracy goofs. The ones who state as facts a thing that I know, I live in a trailer on the edge of town, but I have secret inside knowledge as to what's going on and why it's happening. <laughs> and one of them was that Barack Obama was definitely going to lose this election because it had all been rigged and foreordained by like the Bilderberg group. It was all part of the plan, the Blue Gal. The Trilateral Commission. Yeah, the Trilateral Commission. It was, it was all <laughs> part of the plan, Blue Gal. And that's why he was going to lose. And and of course, like um, like Larry Kudlow, everyone knows this. Everyone's talking about it. We all know this. This is a fact. And then, of course, since this was 2012, um, and I was writing about a guy named Glenn Greenwald at the time, and how Glenn Greenwald seemed to be lying a lot, a lot. And he seemed to like not care about journalistic standards, and he would turn his horde of, of drooling idiots loose on anybody who questioned him. And a whole bunch of my comments were, fuck you, you drooling, jackbooted, obot, fascist, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it was like old Poor drift glass. He took a lot of abuse. I, well, I, Especially I'm, over Greenwald. You know what? And I'm still here, ain't I? Yeah. Still yeah. here. Uh, me and Seska, me and Bob Seska took a whole lot of shit for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it was like, you know, old home week. I could smell what was going on at the time. I had the taste in my mouth of what I was drinking in 2012. It was it was weird. Um, and sadly, I'd be willing to bet that some of those you jackbotted, you jackbooted Obot fascist, and everyone knows the conspiracy. And if Obama had won, it would have been, aha, of course they rigged it so he would win. You know, it doesn't matter because it's all rigged and you know it and nobody else does, but the voices in your head tell you it's true. I would bet you that at least some of those people have followed Jimmy Dore over the Rainbow Bridge into crazy town mm-hmm. and are now either passively, you know, I'm going to vote third party because both sides are terrible. Everyone knows it's rigged and the only solution is to blow things up or are voting for Trump. I bet you a handful of people who used to read my blog are now MAGA because they believe the whole system is rigged by the Trilateral Commission and the Bilderberg Group and I don't know, Amazon. And the only way to fix our problems, Blue Gal, the only way is by blowing the whole thing up. And the best person to blow shit up and start over is Donald Trump. Um, wow. yeah. Now, a hat tip to Rod Green on yeah. the social media sites for sending us this Associated Press headline. <sighs> I got to take a breath. <laughs> Quote, one attack, two interpretations. Biden and Trump both make January 6th riot a political rallying cry, unquote. Now, is that Ron Fournier's music I hear? Because, <laughs> you know, this takes me back, Blue It takes me back to uh, 2016. The, yeah. The, you know, yeah. really is both sides, Blue Gal. It really is. And, and I know what happened to Matthew Dowd, but Ron Fournier used to run AP, which may be That's why right. AP is such a both sides do it shithole. He, and he, went he on must to have thing. some acolytes still there. Oh, I'm sure yeah. he does. Well, this is what they teach them in journalism school, apparently. Uh-huh. Find what Republicans uh-huh. are doing wrong. It should be obvious and self-evident to the most casual observer. Flip it around, say, probably some liberal somewhere is doing something worse. Or liberals doing bad things is what's causing these poor Republicans to do bad things. And then publish it, and you'll eventually end up with a seat on Meet the Press. So, yay! Isn't that great? We're going to have more, more both-siderism later in the show. Oh, but, good. So uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, I wanted to share uh, what I found to be the most amusing Washington Post story of the week mm-hmm. by Sarah Ellison in the Washington Post. Drift Glass, it turns out that Republicans are getting their news from the stupidest man on the Internet, <laughs> Gateway Pundit. Oh, I need to. I got to lay down for this. I have to. My painting <laughs> couch. I got to pull out my painting couch. <laughs> Shocking. Well, Shocking. and I. I think I knew this. I think I knew that people on the right read Gateway Pundit a lot, but yeah. I didn't realize how influential 
the stupidest man on the internet. How, how much Truly what he is. says gets laundered into the regular into stuff. Into right-wing is media, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And yep. and Sarah Ellison in the Washington Post really went to town on this to find out. And here's what she wrote. The site's founder, Jim Hoft, who, by the way, is the stupidest man on the internet, mm-hmm. who started blogging as a hobby in 2004. Well, Drift Glass, he has something in common with you. Isn't that nice? Yes, yes, he does. Isn't that great? We started <laughs> the same place. Me and Jim, we know each other from way back in the blogging no. day. No, we don't. Uh, He is among, quote, the best at creating a right-wing ecosystem. Right-wing podcast host and former Trump advisor Stephen K. Bannon said in an interview as if it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. I I added that last part. Uh, Hoff did not respond to requests to be interviewed for this report. Bannon said Hoff is often one of the first to pick up a social media post or a local news story that other right-wing personalities then repeat and aggregate. Mm -hmm. He, quote, isn't afraid to take a leading edge where you don't have all the facts, but they are coming together. Bannon explained. Lies. Lies. He takes the lies and makes them a headline. Mm -hmm. Once Gateway Pundit puts one of its signature all-caps headlines on a story, that provides what Bannon calls an infrastructure upon which his own (laughs) podcast and other right-wing outlets and influencers can build. So it really was infrastructure week all the time. All the time. But the infrastructure is Gateway Pundit. And Uh. and this is exactly what Kudlow was saying. I've heard this everywhere. Well, it was... People are talking. And you see this in in right-wing Twitter, too, that people pushing back on something and they're all saying the same thing it's because they all read gateway pundit um and believe that it's gospel all right getting back to ellison that infrastructure now this this amazed me that infrastructure was useful to pro-trump one america news a small Mm -hmm. cable network that pushed conspiracy theories about the 2020 election a former oan producer attested that he and his colleagues were directed to consult gateway pundit when they arrived at work to inform the day's programming. According to depositions and documents from a defamation lawsuit filed against the Trump campaign and others, including Gateway Pundit by a former Dominion Voting Systems executive who was falsely accused by Trump allies of helping to swing the 2020 election. Quote, check Gateway Pundit, Epic Times, and The Blaze right when you get in. These are very helpful to find good OAN content. Read one January 14th, 2021 email to producers from the channel's news director. And now we go from the sublime to the ridiculous. Mm -hmm. In the weeks before he left office in 2021, Trump brandished printouts of Gateway Pundit articles questioning the results of the election, saying, say, former aides, who spoke on the condition of anonymity, yeah, Yeah. I would too, to describe private White House conversations. When he was looking for evidence, Gateway Pundit was one reliable place he knew he could go for validation and maybe even some new ideas, said one former aide. Yeah. There there is a a fourth piece of that bridge Mm -hmm. that um, they don't cover in this article, but it it's there and it's you've got the stupidest man on the internet creating bullshit infrastructure that gets fed to steve bannon that gets cycled through whatever that gets and ends up you know epic times the blaze that ends up on fox or some other place yeah what the the missing piece is that that bullshit many times gets then pushed into the new york times right Right. Uh, just keep repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. Eventually, they'll cover it. You know, that one Penn State trans swimmer mm-hmm. is a New York Times headline. Why? Because these idiots just say it over and over and over again. And I have listened to and watched our so-called never Trump allies get really pissed at Democrats because these issues, you have to address these issues. And here's why, how you failed in your messaging. And I have listened to them go on and on about some fragment of a sentence that Jennifer Granholm said. Yeah. 
and about how, well, you're just telling people that they should just buy electrical cars and, and, and oil doesn't matter. And, and Democrats need to message better. They need to get, and you go back and you look, and I did this actually, go back to look at her actual comments. And they were exactly what this idiot said she should have said. He didn't get them through listening to her. He right. got them filtered and filtered and filtered and filtered. And rather than say, my former party are full of liars, I will check into this. It was, here's why Democrats failed at the messaging game. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because the right feels free to tell a million lies every day. And if your solution for Democrats is you have to chase down every one of those and out message the lies that my former party is telling every day, then of course Democrats are going to lose. That's not a game we want to get involved with. So that's why I'm proposing, Blue Gal, that <laughs> we change our format over or do a, a third or fourth podcast. How many are we up to now? Three, four, five no, podcasts? No, two. We're up to two a week. And then we have a third one that we do at the end University. of the month, Science Fiction I, University. I want to spend at least an hour a week doing a vibe cast, <laughs> which is vibes. Vibe cast. You know, it, I know that crime is down according to statistics, but, you know, it feels like it's up. You know, I, I personally paid two dollars and seventy cents for gas, but it feels like it's four dollars. Mm -hmm. I, I want because A, it's really easy to do that. And B, uh -huh. it's all about whatever is going on in my groin and gut today. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with facts. And apparently that's how a whole lot of voters make their mind up. That's how they, Glenn Beck does his podcast every day. It just feel and you know what? He's he yeah. makes about uh a ten dollars a month more than we do. So I'm he thinking, makes ten million dollars more a year than we do. Yeah. So <laughs> let's shift over to a democratic version of of vibing. You, oh, know, you know, I know that Donald Trump says he's not an alien from the planet Zendar, but it but feels, he feels like, he's only, like it is. It yeah. It feels like he eats babies. It really does feel that way. And maybe the problem with Republicans is they're bad at messaging because why do I feel that Donald Trump eats babies? Because Republicans suck at messaging, and that's the real problem. So I think there is a market out there for us just kind of blowing off this whole fact and news stuff and just telling people how it feels to be alive yeah, in America right now. Yeah, you could look right yourself up in the mirror the first morning after no, you I did would, that. But. Now, so, and, and on that subject, since we're talking about that now, since I brought it up, uh, this new kind of regardless of what the Constitution says vibe, <laughs> which is starting to show up all over the right, yep, is yep. fucking priceless. This is a quote mm -hmm. from Matt Lewis, who I'm told is an American conservative political writer, blogger, podcaster, and columnist for The Daily Beast, formerly of The Daily Caller, and has written for The Week. He has also appeared on CNN and MSNBC as a political commentator. He shows up on Morning Joe all the time. He always has he's a book. He's also the author blog. of The Portable Sarah Palin, Yeah, by he's, the way. He's just, he's just a, yeah. a waste of skin and carbon. <laughs> but, but he has opinions, Blue Gal. And this mm -hmm. is from his Daily Beast article entitled, Stop Trying to Eject Trump from the Ballot. It Won't Work. Quote, the notion of keeping a major candidate that you want to vote off the ballot feels patently un-American, regardless of what the Constitution might say. To a sizable part of the country, the party trying to undermine democracy is the Democrats. And fair or not, they're feeding into this narrative, unquote. Fair no, the right answer not. is, the right answer is, my former party are a bunch of brain-dead, reprogrammable zombies who believe crazy, stupid shit. Now, I have said a million times, as Matt Lewis, that I believe in the Constitution and what the Constitution says. And I'm an originalist, and I believe in the words of the Constitution. That's sacred and holy, and there's no greater holy, secular document in our democracy than the, than, than the Constitution. Here's the plain text reading of the 14th Amendment. Donald Trump should not be on the ballot anywhere, regardless of what a bunch of brain-dead zombies believe. End of story. Of course, that story doesn't get published in the Daily Beast or get you on Morning Joe or anything like that. So now this pairs very nicely with Trump's lawyer, Christina Bob, who gave the game away by admitting that Trump might well be guilty of insurrection, but it doesn't matter whether he's guilty or not or whether he's broken the law or not. Appearing on the far right wing QAnon channel, Real America's Voice, Bob says, quote, the president is elected by the entire nation and should be the entire nation who determines who they want for president. Here comes the money shot. Whether they're guilty of insurrection or not, unquote. Wow. You know what? Man. We went through an entire civil war and rewrote our constitution to make sure these sort of scumbags would never again come close to wielding political power. 
And now that they've infested the courts, have gotten elected to the White House, control a massive media machine, they are undoing what people died in the Civil War to do, which is stop American fascism from becoming the default setting of the entire United States. Congratulations. And Matt Lewis says, you know, they should be able to get away with it because it feels wrong to deny fascists, you know, the right to their free and fair voice in this country. People who yeah. wanted to overthrow the government should have a chance to do that. That's just not fair that they're not allowed to do that. Anyway. Well, you and I have had a number of conversations this week about democratic messaging and, you know, what should Democrats do and how do sure. we message and and one thing that depresses me about all of this is when David Pluff says, look, in terms of the mechanics of elections, mm -hmm. it really is about persuading 200,000 people. Right. None of which are to us. To get out and vote and, and just turn out is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. 200,000 people that very specifically we need them to turn out in these five states mm -hmm. and they need to turn out for us. And many of them we know will turn out for Democrats but we need them to turn out. And then there's the other ones who will turn out to vote and we need to make sure they vote for us. Because but it's only 200,000 else... people that are going to determine getting to 270 in the electoral college. Because everywhere else, everywhere else, the, the election's over. It's over. Everywhere else. And so over. I get frustrated and think, okay, here we are talking about preserving our democracy, protecting democracy. That This will be the last election we ever have if we elect Trump. And so on. And yet there's so little democracy that we're actually fighting to protect because mm -hmm. of the Electoral College. Yeah. So, you know, I, I know that's a battle for another day and that battle, the pill we need to take this year is to get Biden back in office. Yep. And that's it. But behind the scenes, all of this stuff about Wolfpack and getting the Electoral College over with, <laughs> the the... Um, national popular vote measure is mm -hmm. really important. Um, and, and then in terms of the messaging part of it, um, we don't have to convince everybody to be a liberal Democrat. And we don't have to convince everybody to read jobs numbers. Right. Um, I, I was reminded, as you and I were rehearsing for the show, about Middle Child mm -hmm. when Brexit came out. And middle child at this point was in ninth grade, tenth grade, somewhere in yeah. there. Yeah. And she texted me and she said, what is this about Brexit? I don't think I like it because I've heard it's racist and I don't really need to understand Brexit. I just know I don't like racism. Okay. Bing. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> and bells went off in my head and went, bing, you've got yeah. it. Yeah. You've got it. It's based on lies and racism. That's what yeah. it's based on. In college, and, you can deconstruct the whole thing in your political right. science class. You can, you can right start, now, start the, the Latin decon conjugation and mm -hmm. go from there. But really, what, what as a ninth grader and Americans who are at a ninth grade level of, it, of political education need to understand is, I don't like it when women who are pregnant and want their baby, but their baby is sick or they're sick and they're going to die if they don't have an abortion. I don't like that. I don't like the government coming in and telling them they have to die. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's, That's all you not need to know. Complicated. <laughs> but now, now, blue gal, if I may. Yeah. On on the other hand, mm -hmm. I feel like the economy is a disaster. <laughs> and I feel like my prices are going up, and I well, feel that, like I guess that is when we have to uh, message in terms of you know what were Christmas sales this year. How much did you get for Christmas? Yeah, but I feel have, like I did. I feel like I feel like. Well, you can't argue I can't with fight that. that. How can you now, fight that? Now, I got to just say, just as a brief aside, I wrote a thing this week um, about the the age of persuasion is over. Yeah, you know, I saw forget that. about persuading people; they're not persuadable. The people you're talking to can't be done. I, I, it was pretty good. I think I, I documented it very well, and I said what I said, and I mean what I mean. And one of my readers was very frustrated and said, "Fine." If you can't persuade anyone anymore, what do you do? And mm -hmm. the answer is postcards to voters. Mm -hmm. Get out the vote. Knock doors. Get people registered. You know, if it's it's the unglamorous, unsexy, true nitty-gritty of politics at the ground level that mm -hmm. gets people elected. 
Right. And you know what? And you when might... you're talking at a bar with someone or if in the office with someone mm -hmm. and they say, oh, the economy is terrible. And you go, really? Because you and I got a raise last year. Yeah. Really? And and like that waitress who told her own table right. and she's in a she's dependent on them for tips. This was this was 2004. This, eight. This was 2008, 2008. Mm -hmm. with John McCain. Mm hmm. And there's a table of after work, all having a beer, men and women, all white, sitting at the brew pub. Oh, so who are you going to vote for? And this is, you know, October. This is when people disinterested the rest of the time are all right. going to be talking about the presidential election. Yeah. Because that's, and that's when it matters. I am so in agreement. I know it's driving the mainstream media crazy because they need more coverage and they're really mad that there isn't going to be a primary season in 2024 for anybody. <laughs> but their debates blew down. Oh, their debates. Politico is beside themselves. Ten Grain at Mock Paper Scissors had, had, had a post about Tiger Beat on the Potomac, as mm -hmm. Charlie Pierce calls Politico. You know, whining. Oh, it's going to be so boring because the primaries are over. Trump won and Biden's going to win and that's it. And we don't. Nah. what are we going to do for hits and, and likes and... I don't know. Reporting? News? Reporting. Hire, Maybe reporting. Hire good writers who are good at writing things that people are interested in reading? Yeah. There's, anyway. There's nothing going on in the abortion issue anywhere that you could talk about. Yeah. No. Without... Um, yeah. <laughs> without poll numbers and debates, right? Without and zingers. picking a side. We need more zingers. Yes. Right. So, But um, this idea that you have to con communicate. And, and this restaurant, this beer pub. And the one guy said, I think I'm going to vote for McCain. And the waitress said, really? Are you kidding me? And the women at her table went, oh, my God. Come on, Really? Man. Come on, Come man. on. Yeah. And peer pressure. Now, I don't know who he walked into the voting booth and voted for. He probably did vote for McCain. Yeah. But, but he didn't tell his friends to go vote for McCain because they no. weren't going to have it. No. And so you have this opportunity in your interactions with people. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another wonderful story about... Uh, being behind, being in front of, excuse me, an older couple at the grocery store. This was told on Reddit of, um, I'm, I'm in front of this older couple and we're chatting and we're just talking and it's so nice, but it, the line is going a little bit slow. And then they said it, nobody wants to work anymore. And he looked at them and said, not for these wages. Mm -hmm. ah, ah. Would you, would you work here and deal with this line for seven seventy five an hour? Would you, would you come, you want to come in here and get a job? They're hiring. You want to come in and get a job for seven seventy five an hour and wait and check out these 10 people who are in line. Do you want to do that? And take this kind of abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to work anymore. You're retired. You're literally being paid by the government not to work. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, gosh. Yeah. Well, why would know. someone, somebody push back on what I had to, well, I guess you're right. That is kind of low. Mm-hmm. They're, you're not going to put up with their bullshit in public. And it doesn't mean, you know, I don't want anybody to be put in a position where they're afraid they're going to get shot. I know that's a lot where a lot of us are right now with, as you said, Drift Glass, the menace. menace. I think a lot of what's going on is just we're we're living in a in a country where a certain percentage of people are, are either terrorists or terrorist sympathizers. Yeah. And yeah. that's scary. But in in places where you feel safe to do so, especially about the economy, yeah, saying, I got a raise last year. Or my my stocks are doing great, yeah. you know, or whatever it is. Whatever I, you know, I'm I'm we we we're we're doing okay this year, Drift Glass. We would okay. like more Patreon supporters. We we really we kind of need more. <laughs> yes, we kind of need doing, more. We're our, doing our healthcare than... bills way up. I will say yeah. that. I and I still haven't heard from anybody about my letter. I wasn't complaining. I was making an observation of, to the Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare, or whatever he was. Oh, that's why that services. That's why that van's been parked out in front of our house for a week. <laughs> <laughs> with the guy with dark glasses, it's two guys deep, with dark glasses in the front the of a deep panel state. van. You know, you're allowed to complain to the government. You're allowed to yell at cops. You know, yeah, yeah you're allowed to yeah. do those things. This this is yeah, no, not not yeah. a fascist state yet, but. Good anyway, Lord. Anyway. Anyway, uh, Will Stansel tweeted this week, an outright majority of Americans live inside a hallucinatory, hallucinatory, excuse me, media bubble 
or Biden is senile and the economy is a nightmare and the FBI did January 6th. But you point this out and everyone in politics, meaning Politico, is like, okay, but why is everyone really so upset? Is it gas prices? It's economic anxiety, Blue Gal. Right. It's not the racism. Let's look at the polls. It's not the racism or the stupidity yeah. or no, the brainwashing. It's, and, and all they know how to do is read poll numbers and say both yeah. sides. Mm-hmm. So well, break that mesmerism yeah, where, where you, you can. can. And look for opportunities to break the mesmerism where you can. And remember, knocking doors for petitions for politicians, yeah. phone banking. Standing outside the post the office asking yeah. for signatures. It's yeah. That's what makes the difference. That actually yeah. makes a difference. And it, it's small. It's so small. And you can't see it. And you can't quantify it. You're not sure how much it matters. But you know what? We have a Democratic congresswoman now, thanks mm-hmm. to... Um, a little bit of gerrymandering or rewriting district lines, but also relentless organizing, relentless phone banking, and a whole lot of shoe leather got A lot of us. unions supported Nikki Budzinski. Yeah. Yeah. Rodney Davis out, Nikki Budzinski in. And that kind of ground level activism, especially in marginal areas, actually does work, actually does matter. And, and then on her Christmas card, she was milking a cow. Yeah. So the the sad thing is that the election, for all practical purposes, is over. It's over in Illinois. Biden's going to win Illinois. Okay, yeah. that's just yeah. a fact. It's over in most places, but it's it, it's grinding to think that you really don't have a direct line to um, changing the world. Your vote in your blue state is not going to change anything. Well, and your let's talk in, to the re- let's talk to the blue dots in red states for a minute. No, no, no. What I mean is, yes, it's grinding that living in a red state. Uh-huh. A bright red state, an R plus 10 state. Right. As a blue voter, you're not going to be able to move much of anything. But right. <clears throat> while it's it's pissing me off, this 200,000 people in five states. Yeah, right. It's only 200,000 people in five yeah. states. We can do that. That's very yeah. doable. If we all focus our attention and work on those things that will move those people into the D column and make our people want to stay home because they're embarrassed or ashamed or just exhausted with Donald Trump. We can do this. It's very doable. Well, um, and and Donald Trump's only talking to his people, right? I mean, and and offending everybody else. So yeah, well, you know, and owning every headline. I wanted to spend one minute, or maybe half an hour. I, I want to spend <laughs> one minute. Ah. I, I I wrote a post also this week about the 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 harvest and the thresher, and the, how the thresher rolls along after the harvest is over, and what. I was trying to describe verbally this week or in written form this week was that if you have an objectively evil institution that has no merit to it at all on a moral level, like slavery, mm-hmm. you can't go around saying, I know this is a completely you know, a simplification of a long history of human slavery and slave trafficking and so on and so forth. Bear with me. When you have an objectively evil institution like United States generational chattel slavery, where you own people forever, you breed them like cattle, you use them up and you beat them and you rape them and then you buy them and sell them. And your economy is based on that. You can't justify that by saying, well, I like money. Money is important (laughs) to me and I want to be very rich and exploiting the labor of these people generation after generation is what makes me rich. So I should be able to do that. You have to wrap it in the Bible. You have to wrap it in scripture. You You have to create an ideology where the, you have permission to do that sort of thing, where it's actually a noble, holy thing. And that's what slavery was about. That's why, if you read the, I think I did this last week, maybe, the Cornerstone speech by Alexander Stevens explicitly talks about how slavery is a noble institution. It's a good Christian institution. We're doing benefit to the world. God himself wants white men to rule over all. And the problem, once you build an ideology to defend an indefensible system, is the ideology keeps going right on, right along long after the institution that it was trying to defend disappears. So you get rid of slavery, white, white nationalism remains. Jim Crow, white nationalism, get rid of Jim Crow, white nationalism stays on and on and on and on. It just keeps going on and on. It's the dominant theme of the Republican Party. It's what the Great Replacement Theory is all about. White yeah. nationalism is what they're fucking proud of now. And that started centuries ago. Now, the the other thing, the other machine that they're trying, that they built to win elections was a bunch of rich guys who don't want to pay taxes mm-hmm. and think that they should be able to run their business any way they want. Gilded age mentality. I have a business that makes me morally superior to you. 
poverty is your own goddamn fault. You should just starve if you're poor. Minorities are here to be exploited. I'm rich because I'm good, and I'm good because I'm rich, and the government should keep its fucking hands off my stuff and let me do whatever I want. That is the mentality of the people who are at the top of the money chain of the Republican Party. You're never going to get people voting to get rid of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, or other social programs for the middle class and the poor. That's immoral and disgusting, and it's an oligarchy. So if you want to get stupid people voting against their own interests, you have to frame it like it's freedom, baby. It's about freedom. (laughs) It's about, and and you want to be free? You know who's at fault for this? Government. You know who tells me it's government? Ronald Reagan. The government is not the solution. The government is the problem. Government is evil. Government's bad. You know who is on the side of government? Minorities, uppity women, liberals, unions, all those people. Unions are basically communists, let's face it. All those people that you hate are the ones who are taking money away from you and giving it to welfare queens. And you build mm-hmm. a couple of generations of people who hate the government automatically, who despise the government automatically, who will accept any conspiracy on the basis that this is the government out to get you, the government's coming for you, and that your tax money are being stolen from you because it's basically theft. It's basically you're the slave. We're taking your money away and giving it to the undeserving. Great. So you've built two, three generations of people who all believe this right down in their bones. And then you lost control of it because you got what you wanted. You got your tax cuts, you got your deregulation, you got your courts. Now what? Well, now those people want to blow up the government. Now those people want a fucking king. They want an empire. They want a dictator. That wasn't in the plan. Mm -hmm. But you built all the preconditions where that's the natural end product of the party that you and Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity and Lee Atwater and Ronald Reagan and Barry Goldwater and Richard Nixon and Pat Buchanan and, and, and Joe Scarborough all created. That's where your party was going to go once you built the machine you built. And once you got what you wanted, you found out you couldn't turn it off. I talked a little bit last time about the AZ button, the AZ5 button. There's mm-hmm. no button to turn this off anymore. You thought there was, but there isn't. And now we're living with the consequences of you building a machine that you couldn't control. And that's why things are so fucked up. End of story. Now, I think we need uh, some good news, Blue Gal. You want to do a news roundup with some <laughs> sure. good news at with the top? positive, upbeat end of 2023. This is from Simon Rosenberg's final 2023 Hopium Chronicle. Mm-hmm. Dow in record territory, inflation running below the Fed target rate. Interest rates coming down next year. GDP growth 4.9% last quarter. You know, if it, if Donald Trump had had one quarter was 4.9%, he would be demanding that he get a Nobel Prize in economics. Well, no, his GDP growth was 25%. It was 30%. 30%. And it feels like GDP it is was. negative now. It feels like it there feels like never was. was a pandemic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh it's looking close to 3% for this quarter, best job market since the 1960s, the lowest uninsured rate in history. Crime has fallen, even though it feels like it hasn't, Drift Lab. Like Crime has, has fallen across the U.S. this year. Rents are coming down. Consumer sentiment is spiking. Wage growth, prime age worker participation rate, new business formation are all in historically elevated territory I don't know, with this economy feeling so bad, I wonder why the lines at airports were so damn long with people going on Disney vacations. Oh, that's right. These were, yeah. Best recovery in the G7 is in the USA. We're setting records for domestic oil and renewable production. $130 billion in student debt forgiven. The good news just keeps coming. Democrats are also seeing improvement in national polling. A majority of the independent polls taken in recent weeks have Biden tied or ahead. The influential New York Times poll, which had Biden trailing Trump two months ago, now has Biden up 47 to 45 with likely voters. It kills me that that's where it is. It kills me. It should be 70-30 at best. It should be 70-30. At best, yeah. Uh, But this is a poll also, and don't forget that a lot of people fuck with pollsters. They really do. Mm Mm-hmm. Dems have picked up three points in 538's Congressional Generic Tracker in recent months, and Navigator's recent House Battleground Tracker polling found Republicans losing ground and Democrats now with a clear advantage. And I just think that if we keep on talking about it, 
Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you know, the economy is terrible. Wait a minute. Didn't you go to on a cruise last year, Fred? Did, well, yeah. How was your cruise? Well, yeah. How'd you, where'd you find the money to do that? Oh, your investments mm-hmm. are doing that well, huh? Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you have to, you have to break the mesmerism. That's, that's it. Mm-hmm. Now, let's change direction just slightly. Because okay. <laughs> it's not, it's, but it, it's funny because a, a, a alert reader of mine, Josh, I think he's a listener also, has asked the question, how do you know it's an election year with a Democratic incumbent? And the answer is because on January 2nd, the deficit is suddenly the top issue again. Yay. Oh. Yeah. New yeah. York Times, you know, I don't know if you've noticed this, Jim, but deficits are really bad. And, of course, you have people like Chuck Grassley going, yeah, it's out of control Democratic spending that's doing it. And, you know, it's so at this point, it's so predictable. It's like it's a wonderful life on television during Christmas time. Every time there's a Democratic incumbent in the White House, you know, that they're going to roll out. Deficits are bad and it's all the Democrats fault. And there's no point arguing it because, again, no fair remembering stuff. But we remember right. it. Maybe we'll do something on it. I don't know. But you wanted to talk about Taxachusetts, blue gal. Oh, well, um, Massachusetts passed a millionaire's tax. And uh, it got, it's been upheld as legal for them to do this. And it's going great. There was an article in Common Dreams about how well Massachusetts revenue is doing. People are not leaving Massachusetts to go galt because their taxes are higher. Uh-huh. And, it, you know, and it's a tax on millionaires. And one of the things that Massachusetts government, now, granted, they have a Democratic supermajority, right, right, in the legislature. Right. Sometimes they elect a liberal Republican to keep taxes lower for, mm-hmm. especially property taxes, lower. Like but, Mitt Romney. Like Mitt Romney and, and um, other, other cons- never anyone who was rabidly pr- anti-choice. No. You know, no, they well, don't do yeah. that, but they yeah. pick a green eye shade Republican every once in a while. Yeah. But they, it's because they have a Democratic supermajority in the legislature. The messaging for this tax has been to continually talk about where the money is going. Mm -hmm. And so it's, we use the money from the millionaire's tax to give all children in Massachusetts free lunches, free school lunches. We use this millionaire's tax revenue to rebuild this bridge, Mm -hmm. specifically (laughs) this state highway bridge that you all use to go to the Cape or whatever mm-hmm. it is. He's in terrible you know, shape. He's yeah. in terrible shape. It's always been down to one lane for as long as you can remember. We used revenue from this. And so people can see, A, oh. it's not coming out of my pocket because I don't make a million dollars a year. B, it's going to something that I really want to have happen. Right. Or that I really can't argue against. Clean water, clean air. I mean, these are things we really need to start asking Republicans why they don't like clean air. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm just saying, uh, yeah. So it's it's going very well and it's working. And so, as I said today, at crooks and liars, AOC's dress was right. <laughs> you don't hear too much about AOC anymore because she got married, and yeah, so she's she not a single Latina anymore. Right. That's why I have in my Twitter bio, "Happy wife of Mister Electrico." <laughs> it's to keep the assholes away. Keep the weirdos out of yeah. there. Yeah. Who wants to tell the idiots who are upset at Green Day about Johnny Cash, Drift Glass? Yeah. Yeah. I had this exchange with a very, very conservative colleague of mine many years ago who just talked all kinds of shit. And I finally just said, you know, Johnny Cash was a hippie. And that just (laughs) made his shorts catch fire. (laughs) Whoa, what? What? Because country music is, is, is about dogs and guns and tits and beer. Listen, Johnny Cash, who is, I know you love him. I love him too. Great man. He was about what? Prison reform, Native American rights, environmentalism, not punishing people who smoke pot, taking care of the poor, the 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 uh, the dignity of labor, about stealing a Cadillac one piece at a time. Okay, there's that. That's but funny. He, but he why was, did he wear black? Right. And he talks about it. He does. He's in That's mourning for the working people That's of his country. That's signature song. And, yeah. and people who uh, had drug overdoses or who were t- tossed off their land. And, you know, and he didn't want to fucking hear that, even though it's it's right there on the guy's shirt, literally. Yeah. This is yeah. what Johnny Cash believed in. And it is this 
you know, this is a guy who tried to tell me that Archie Bunker was really a Democrat. I said, <laughs> Archie Bunker, you mean the guy who talked endlessly about Richard E. Nixon? You mean that? And it just, but it was like he had it in his head that certain things, certain myths were true because that's what he wanted to believe. He had a vibe about Johnny Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash was really a right-wing guy like me. And he wasn't going to hear from no goddamn liberal who was riding in the car with him at the time that, you know, no. And here's and here are the receipts. It made him mad. It didn't change his mind. But it was a thing that they, they, they build these mythologies. They're so fragile. They're so goddamn fragile. They can't stand hearing anything that might come in contradiction. And you know what? One of the protective elements of their bubble is uh, both siderism. Um, so now we're going to do some, you probably already heard this, some honest to God, museum quality, New York times pitch bot material, which isn't from the New York times pitch bot. It's from the actual New York times. Here's the article entitled would keeping Trump off the ballot hurt or help democracy. They didn't ask me, didn't come to my diner, but you know, they, they did talk to some people. Some critics say, God, don't you love it? Some critics say the battles over the former president's ballot status are turning him into a martyr and eroding faith in American elections among people who don't believe in democracy and hate American elections. Uh, the article goes on, J. Michael Luddick, a retired conservative federal appeals court. Let me repeat, a retired conservative federal appeals court judge hailed Colorado's and Maine's decision as unassailable, quote unquote, interpretations of the Constitution. Officials in Maine and Colorado who disqualified Mr. Trump from the ballot have written that their decisions stemmed from following the language of the Constitution, period, right? Yep. How do you disagree with that? Well, let me tell you. The article goes on that on a sunny Friday afternoon in the Echo Park neighborhood of Los Angeles, Deanna Drewis, 37, a copywriter, and Aaron Bagley, 43, a contractor, both of whom have consistently voted for Democrats, expressed a queasy ambivalence over such an extraordinary step. Quote, I'm really just conflicted, Mr. Bagley said. It's hard to imagine he didn't fully engage in insurrection. Everything points to it. But the other half of the country is in a position where they feel like it should be up to the electorate. I don't know what to say about that. Yes, the other half of the country who despise democracy, who don't give a shit about the Constitution, who are totally cool with Donald Trump breaking the law, say that Donald Trump should wipe his ass with the Constitution, break the law, and get away with it. You know what? That's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not queasy about that. I'm queasy about why you're not up on your hind legs, Mr. Bagley, calling those people traitors, zombies, and scumbags. That's what bothers me. Anyway, Trump yep. and the media are collectively too lazy to read the 25-page decision from Colorado or the 34-page decision from Maine both of which are entirely focused on whether to, quote, exclude from the ballot candidates who are constitutionally prohibited from assuming office, unquote, you know, like Barack Obama, because he already served two terms, or middle child, because she's not 35 years old, or people who weren't born in this country. All those things are also constitutionally prohibited. Anyway. Yep, that's it. That's it's, it. It's, 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 and you know what? There is a remedy for that. If you think he should be on the ballot, all you got to do is get two thirds of both houses of Congress to say, cool, let Donald Trump be on the ballot. And he gets to be on the ballot. Just go to Congress, make your case and let them decide. That's what's written in the Constitution that you all say is the secular Bible that we should all follow, regardless of whether we like it or not. And yes, I'm talking to you, Second Amendment assholes. Yeah. Yeah. Read the Constitution. Yeah. Was the sign all the time at when, <laughs> well, as Obama was being inaugurated. They uh -huh. didn't spell Constitution right, though, Drew. No. no. According to a Deseret News Harris poll, 64% of Republicans say Donald Trump is a person of faith, and only 34% say Mitt Romney is. If they looked at their underwear, Drift Glass, yeah. they would know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Oh, but you then mean... you said Jesus is in the stain on Donald Trump's underpants sure. so i'm i don't know that for definite for sure but it wouldn't surprise me also <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me that a whole bunch of these evangelicals think uh mormonism is a cult oh yeah yeah and but trumpism isn't no trumpism is is god god acting yeah. on earth and in history um this is from dave roberts aka dr volt who thank god was on christopher hayes show last week i believe or the week before yes one of us is actually making it onto the tv and talking sense to people 
quote, U.S. politics would improve if more lefties came up through unions rather than dorm rooms. Unions teach the unromantic, nitty-gritty view of politics, all about power and tangible gains. Dorm room leftism rewards romanticism and rhetorical grandiosity untethered to material reality. Now, I'm a great believer in both power and tangible gains and nitty-gritty reality and rhetorical grandiosity. I like both of those things. But honestly, (laughs) the most successful dorm room organizers, the people who come out of the dorm room as successful politicians or successful organizers, go right to the streets and are knocking on doors and are organizing their local unions or organizing nonprofits. They they get organizing their fellow college students. Yeah, absolutely. uh, In favor of reasonable Gun, gun regulations. Right. Yes, that's a they, big deal to young voters. Yes. And they, they get what they can and come back for the rest later. They understand yep. the nitty gritty of real politics. And I couldn't agree more. Yep. Yep. Regarding an immigration compromise, Representative Troy Nels, Republican of the Texas 22nd, says, I'm not willing to do too damn much right now to help a Democrat and to help Joe Biden's approval rating, meaning he's not going to vote for anything that actually fixes immigration. And none of them the, Tex- are. the Texas 22nd is an R plus 11 district and was Tom DeLay's old seat. Yeah. And by the way, this week there was a caravan at the border. It was full of white Republican men from mm-hmm. Congress. Yeah, waving their arms and promising basically that we're not going to do a goddamn thing about this. We're not going to do anything. Yes. Democrats right. have made lots of offers going all the way back to the Obama administration and Republicans have shot down every one of them. So yep. uh, this yep. is a, again, one of those things where if you have the opportunity to stick your uh, verbal pencil in someone's eye, not literally just rhetorically about immigration. Yeah. Republicans have killed every immigration deal that they've ever been offered. They've been offered 10. What the fuck do they want? Jimmy. That's not a bad question to ask. This is from the AP. In a Texas case, federal appeals panel says emergency care abortions are not required by the 1986 law because Texas lawmakers want women to die. That's right. The Biden administration cannot use a 1986 emergency care law to require hospitals in Texas to provide abortions for women whose lives are at risk due to pregnancy, a federal appeals court ruled Tuesday. Fuck those guys. Fuck those judges. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mutiny has erupted in a Michigan Republican Party overtaken by chaos, Drift Oh, no. Oh, no. Republicans are now pushing for the removal of Christina Caramo, an election-denying activist who rose to the state party chairmanship last year amid mounting financial problems and persistent infighting. The state party is already deeply in debt, but they took out a $110,000 loan to pay the keynote speaker, Jim Caviezel, an actor who has built an ardent following among the far right after starring in a hit movie this summer about child sex trafficking drift class. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, you know, people associated with that movie have child porn. I mean, it's it's the same as it ever was. The loan that the Republican Party of Michigan took out to pay Jim Caviezel came from a trust tied to the wife of the party's executive director. Unquote. (sighs) Yeah. Meanwhile, okay, so that's going on. Nothing but chaos, infighting, borrowing money from private connected people. Because they're broke. Because they're broke and, and spending it on, you know, keynote speaker, former Jesus, Jim Caviezel. Uh, Meanwhile, the Democratic trifecta actually governing Michigan right now has a plan in place for pre-K for all. By 2027, every single solitary Michigan four-year-old will be eligible to attend a free high-quality pre-K program, regardless of where they live, their race, ethnicity, or how much their family earns. The goal is pre-K for all. And I can guarantee you there are some Mm -hmm. suburban moms Mm -hmm. with two income homes in the suburbs of of Detroit who will be delighted to hear that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, this is that pointing to a tangible, measurable thing that you can hardly argue against. Pro-child. Pro-family. This is where your tax money is going. This to this program that is a, a benefit to all. 
and and reduces crime over time. Yeah. Improves college scores over time. Yeah. Is safer and better for children in terms of mm-hmm. outcomes for their entire educational experience. Mm-hmm. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but compare and contrast. Yeah, exactly. On the one side, you've got what's her name, Christine Caramo, mm-hmm. borrowing one hundred and ten thousand dollars from a trust fund. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, you've got Governor Whitmer and a whole lot of women in the Michigan State Legislature making sure four-year-olds get preschool. Yeah. Who are you going to vote for? Huh? Not a hard choice. Not a hard choice. No, not um, a hard choice. <clears throat> now, speaking of women in politics, <laughs> you've all heard this. You've all heard this. But it bears repeating because, you know, um, according to a uh, focus group uh, podcast I listened to, no Iowa Republican has heard this story. They've oh, all, because wow. they, they, this story doesn't show up on Newsmax, doesn't show up on Fox, so isn't registering at all in the polls in Iowa. Nikki Haley declined to say that slavery was a cause of the Civil War. Instead, she said the causes were basically how the government was going to run and freedoms and what people could and couldn't do, unquote. That's um, because she knows what party she's in. She's not exactly. Dumb. She knows what party she's in, and she knows exactly what she has to say to the racist assholes in her party to get her through the primaries with in second place or third place, mm-hmm. you know, not just driven out with, you know, pitchforks and torches. And she has to do stuff like that. And you know what? She could drop out and join the Democratic tomorrow, Democratic Party tomorrow. All these assholes who are so uncomfortable and so uncomfortable and so uncomfortable and, and feel clearly alienated from the party, they could join the Democratic Party tomorrow. But they don't do it because the propaganda on the right is so powerful, has been going on for so long, they would be so much in danger personally and professionally that they're trapped inside this monster they built and they brought it on themselves. Yep. Yep. Trump endorsed a voter survey describing his potential second term political goals as A, dictatorship. B, revenge, and C, power. He said yes to all that. Yeah, that's, that's you know, that's his Christmas card. Um, meanwhile, in local news, on January 1st, laws banning semi-automatic weapons and library censorship took effect in our state of Illinois. Good. And the former yeah. Illinois gubernatorial candidate named Darren Bailey apparently spent Jesus Christ's birthday hunkered down in his doom cellar with his machine guns daring anyone to come and take him. That lunatic was the guy Republicans He was in a nominated. basement with a jigsaw puzzle and two semiotic mach- automatic machine guns. Yeah. And that's that was the, the-, the symbol he wants to send to Illinois Republicans. Merry yeah. Christmas. Come and get them. Yeah. Great, man. Yeah. Great. Uh, Illinois may not be losing population after all. And this is something that we can tell you on the ground is happening. Uh, yeah. An undercount in the 2020 census, both because of COVID and because Trump deliberately fucked up the census, Mm -hmm. missed 46,400 Illinois residents living in group homes. An adjustment to the population base that will be incorporated in future surveys, the state announced Wednesday. Quote, I'm pleased that the Census Bureau has recognized the undercounting that I and many members of Illinois' congressional delegation have worked to remedy since the 2020 census results were first released. Governor J.B. Pritzker said in a news release, this correction will bring in millions of additional federal funding for crucial programs and help to ensure future counts reflect the true number of Illinois residents. And then he didn't say, at least I couldn't find it. Our future has never been brighter. (laughs) That's just assumed. That's now just assumed. That's just assumed. You know, we got a governor. We got some Democrats. We love him. He can't go. He can't run for president because we love him so much. You can't have. Well, nobody wants him to because Illinois is just never considered when the coastal people get together and decide who's the who's up and who's down. It's like, oh, yeah. And what what about that Pritzker fellow? Oh, he's doing really great. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, he's bankrolling the entire <laughs> he's Democratic Party in the Midwest. <laughs> State parties all over the country. Oh, yeah. yeah well, that's, that's good, too, I suppose. But he, he doesn't have that those Gavin Newsom choppers. <laughs> he doesn't have the, that, that Pat Riley hair that we love so much. Like, yeah, but he's really good at his but job. how many wives he, has he had? One. One. And he apparently loves her to death. Loves her to death and never, never any sex scandals. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners, this week's internet kitty is Cinderfella. Cinderfella is an outdoor cat who was known as Princess until one day he rolled on his back 
Mm -hmm. But Cinderfella knows that gender is a construct anyway. And of course, Cinderfella eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the patio because he's an outside kitty and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Cinderfella. What a sweet cat. At our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty dog or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Do not, you don't dare forget our gourmet coffee guidelines. If you can afford to buy us an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy us one too, okay? This is not charity. This is our job, which we love. If you can spare five bucks a month, please spare five bucks a month at patreon.com forward slash pro left pod. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, please get someone, get down on bended knee, be in a bar in front of someone in line at the shopping center and get them to listen to it. You put the earbuds right in their ears and say, you gotta listen to this. It's good stuff. It's nourishing. It's good for your soul. And thank you very much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the internet kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are working on their vision board for 2024. It includes treats, naps, and scritches, and diabetes medicine, so mostly the same as last year. Hey, let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the humping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2024-25. GGBG Productions.